This is lecture number 48 in the FOA series of lectures on fiber optics. In this lecture, we're going to look at what's a smart city and talk about how smart cities are built on fiber optics. Modern cities like Dubai, shown here, are building massive fiber optic backbones that are used for all the different types of services and communications that are expected of a smart city. And I think the easiest way to define a smart city is to look at some of the things that you typically find in a smart city and talk a little bit about how they're implemented. When most people think of smart cities, they think of connections. They think of connected cities like Santa Monica, California, where we live. Santa Monica has been building its own fiber backbone for 15 years now. And it was the first city, as far as we know, that upgraded their backbone to 100 gigabits per second. And on this network is operating just about every kind of smart city service that you can think of. Besides all the backbone fiber optics you saw in the previous map, Santa Monica also has citywide public Wi-Fi. And the map here shows in red the Wi-Fi corridors, where Wi-Fi is available for the public throughout the city. Santa Monica also has an advanced intelligent traffic control system, which is quite good because we have terrible traffic. We're in California, remember, where everybody has at least one or two cars. This is a picture of one of the smart streetlight controllers on Wilshire Boulevard, just down the street from where we live. It's all hooked up on the citywide fiber optic backbone, and you can see the single mode cables that connect the controllers into the citywide network. If you look up in the air at streetlights in Santa Monica, you'll find a lot of them have been converted to LEDs. Many of the poles have both Wi-Fi and cellular systems installed on them. Many have surveillance cameras, which provide security around the city. And of course, all those poles are connected on fiber. As you walk around on the streets of Santa Monica, you often see techs splicing new customers onto the Santa Monica CityNet backbone. Santa Monica has companies like Google and Yahoo and companies in the electronic gaming business and lots of companies in the movie business. And they all appreciate the connection to that 100 gig Santa Monica backbone. What makes a city a smart city starts with communications, but it's a lot more than that. Even communications is more complicated than most people think. It includes connecting city facilities, the government offices, the educational system, schools and libraries, and it includes public safety, which we'll look at more, more depth later. Of course, you've got to have high-speed internet, gigabit internet with multiple service providers and the provision for fiber to the home. There's been a, a lot of uh, people trying to uh, convince you that uh, wireless is replacing fiber to the home, but fiber to the home is not dead. Communications includes, of course, the services of your traditional telcos with both wireless and wireline service available. The wireless better include 4G and LTE 
cellular, plans for small cells, and future 5G. Uh, FYI, Santa Monica has set aside 600 permits for small cells in its small nine square mile area. A smart city is going to have public and private Wi-Fi. Of course, cable TV with a hybrid fiber coax network and private commercial connections for anybody who wants to connect to the backbone. As we said, fiber to the home is not dead. Verizon Fios, which has been around for a decade now, is focused on building out big cities like Boston and New York and multi-dwelling units. AT&T, prodded by people like Google Fiber, is catching up with Verizon in the number of fiber to the home connections and in a lot more cities. Comcast is doing fiber to the home in multi-dwelling units in the Northeast. Lots of independent developers are installing their own fiber to the home system. Most cities working to become smart cities are planning on having gigabit cities programs to support fiber to the home to anybody in the city that wants it. The only downside that we hear about fiber to the home programs and some smart cities programs is horror stories caused by poor training and cost controls. It's not that difficult to build out the fiber network for a smart city, but it does require realistic knowledge of what it takes to build fiber optic networks. Smart cities need to provide for public safety services. They need to connect public emergency services like police, fire, and ambulance, provide extensive video surveillance of the city. There are also new types of sensors being used in smart cities that can do things like locate the source of gunshots, detect flooding, and even earthquakes to provide assistance in public safety. There are many public services that need to be delivered as part of a smart city program. Healthcare and telemedicine, for example, city and citizen services providing a direct access to the local governments through the smart cities networks. The traditional utilities can also benefit from the development of the smart city networks. Electrical utilities can use the networks for their smart grid and microgrid programs. Water utilities for conservation and managing gray water. Even the sewers and gas systems can benefit from a better communications network. We all know that education can benefit from a smart city communications network. The schools and libraries can be connected to the internet and to each other. You can provide online education and communications with students and parents in the school system. With our current focus on STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math education, the communications provided in a smart city will benefit the students, the parents, and the city. FOA has been working with traffic engineers who see the smart city structure as being necessary for their long-term plans. They're already working on intelligent highways with smart traffic lights and systems that monitor and provide feedback on traffic in the city. They're managing public transportation and providing information services about where transportation is available and when. They're even managing parking garages. In Santa Monica, there's an app that allows you to find out where parking spaces are available in the city garage. But the big thing is probably the future of long-term planning for autonomous vehicles, which is going to require vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle and vehicle-to-infrastructure communications to make it all happen. 
Surprisingly enough, one of the things we don't see often mentioned in conjunction with smart cities is data. Certainly a smart city expects to host data centers for businesses, ISPs, and content providers. But smart cities will generate lots of data. All of those sensors, all of those smart traffic lights, all of these things that make a city smart generate data. And that data needs to be acquired, stored, and analyzed to have any value to the city. And then, of course, the city has to deal with privacy and security issues, which worry us all. One of the big promises of a smart city is, of course, economic development. The whole idea of developing a smart economy with business-friendly communications and business incubators will stimulate investment. But it doesn't happen automatically. It requires planning, it requires investment, and it requires commitment. So economic development, a big thing, is not coming as easy as you might think. When it comes to smart cities, you'll often hear one TLA. That's a three-letter acronym. PPP for Public Private Partnerships. And the reason is that smart cities are generally too expensive for any one party, including the city, to develop on their own. Most cities already have some fiber, and they may have multiple providers of fiber within the same city structure. So one needs to look at a smart city as sharing the infrastructure, sharing the investment, and in fact building often virtualized networks over a metropolitan fiber backbone. What does it take to become a smart city? Well, a lot of planning. And you need to start now if you want to do it. You need to develop a broad understanding of the issues and talk to all the interested parties, starting with the citizens and working your way up to the technology developers who are trying to figure out what a smart city should be and how it should work. You need to understand the finances. You need to think about it long term, but be flexible. And one of the things we've seen is that the smart, smart cities are trying things like this new, unique street light in LA, which combines a street light, a pole for small cells, sensors, video cameras, and even a charging port for electrical vehicles. Things like that are going to be developed and will make lots of sense in the future, but you need to try them and see if they make sense for you. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the international, nonprofit, professional society of fiber optics. We're working worldwide with the cities, the vendors, the thinkers, all the people who working together will make cities smarter.